hopefully that holds up a little better. As I say that, I see some buffering. Um, my fingers crossed that that does a better job. All right, <clears throat> so let's get started today, guys. I guess we're a couple minutes late now, thanks to that. But anyway, this is Black Six from BZ Power. We've got this lovely Lego Technic set today. 42099, the 4x4 four four Extreme Off-Roader. Um, this is the first LEGO Technic Control Plus set that uh, I have, or will be building. Um, so this is based off the new Powered Up system. So I think, I think the only Powered Up set we've built is the Disney Train, um, which you know we could just use a, a normal train controller on, uh, or I guess a powered up train controller. But this one you have to use a smartphone app, which gives you like this cool kind of skin version of the controls, which uh, seems like it will be neat. We'll see how well it works. Um, of course, because of all that technology in here, this set is under a thousand pieces, but retails for $250. And we can see on the side here, and that's because it has uh, two XL motors, one large motor, and this Bluetooth controlled smart hub, which has um, a lot of you know, uh, electronics and uh, wireless radios and things like that in there to make it all work. So obviously that's gonna drive the price up, unfortunately. Uh, so we can see on the back here, that using the smartphone, we can make it go forward and backwards. We can make it turn. Um, it's got suspension on the different wheels. And uh, it's got, I guess, a, oh, excuse me, a little uh, differential on the axle so it can go over all sorts of terrain. Showing off the app a little bit, multifunction control, also one touch control and challenges and achievements. So they kind of gamified the whole thing. So that's kind of interesting. We'll see how that goes. And so let's open this up. Let me know in the chat how things are looking, if we're gonna need to restart the stream at some point again, if it's still being really laggy and buffery. I'm seeing some buffering right now. So inside, the first thing that jumps out is we've got this uh, box for the hub buffering that I can't even see myself on my own recording software. That's not a good sign. So got a box for the hub. Um, I guess presumably you can buy this separately. Uh, I haven't really looked closely on shop at home to see if that's a thing. And then we've got some big tires. Hubs for the tires, and then not too many bags of parts here. Got one, two, three, and then smaller ones and two. So only three numbers. Of course, our instructions, lots of stickers. That might be the thing that takes the longest here. Let's open up that. So I'm assuming that all the buffering must be because I upgraded my computer's operating system this past week. And I had to do that because I was getting to a point where there was upgrades to software I needed that I couldn't even install because I was so far behind. Um, that's the only thing I've changed in the past week. I like, literally have like no applications running right now other than the stuff I need to stream. So I have no idea what is going on that is causing all the buffers. Anyway, sticker sheet. Like I said, lots of stickers. We've got our instruction book. All right, so let's open things up and start building. Yeah, I need to adjust the camera a little bit, so down a little bit more. That's going to be hard because we're like 20 minutes behind.
lots of lovely looking Technic bits here. I guess because of uh, the powered up stuff, there are a lot of warnings in our instructions here. Lots and lots of warnings in all the languages. Ooh. Jeez, the warnings no. <laughs> Looks like some of this is also how to use the hub. We'll figure that out. How to use the app. All right, bag one, building kind of the front motor assembly, bag two, the rear, and bag three, the finishing touches. So it looks like we're gonna need to pop open this guy to get some of our motors out. All right, so they're all individually bagged. We've got our hub. We'll open this when we need to and take a closer look. And then we've got our motors. Don't think I've seen the fairly recent Technic double pin axle combo in red yet. Um, so that's a new color for that part. I think usually it's been in what, black or dark gray, I forget which is which there. thought that um, just upgrading my operating system would cause all these issues here. I guess that'll teach me. That's why I want you to just buy new computers, right? seeing BFA's comment about it being the dark gray one now, so I'll give you an idea of how bad we're lagging. I may have to like restart the stream after each bag or something to potentially catch things up.
this is kind of interesting. We've got the, um, I think, there we go. I've got the same piece here in light gray and yellow. And like the same spot mirrored. So I'm wondering if this is kind of the beginnings of some color coding to make it easier as we continue our build. I do like it when Lego does that in the interior structures. Definitely helps make things uh, simpler. We've got a couple of interesting pieces here for, I assume, our wheel assemblies. And I've seen similar pieces similar to these in the past. I, I think these are a new design. Um, so you can see they're going to snap together and allow, like, even as the wheels go up and down and turn left and right, uh, it'll allow them to still turn uh, and spin. So it's almost like a little universal joint kind of thing, but it's uh, a little different in that it's kind of designed on more certain axes and it's more reinforced than some of the previous iterations that I've seen as far as the ball joint. going in in this step. There we go. So yeah, this is probably going to be our drive axle here. Uh, differentials that if one gear loses its traction or one wheel loses its traction, then one can still spin. How's everyone been doing this week? How's everyone been dealing with uh, the continue pandemic quarantine situation? I know some things are starting to open up a little more, depending on uh, where you are. I know where I work, they are starting to like 
actually talk about people going back to work, starting to figure out schedules and plans. It's definitely not going to be uh, the same. It's not gonna be like all the people at work at once. It's gonna be more like shifts and stuff. But it's gonna be a start, it's gonna be something. See, I know uh, my Lego room is probably looking the most organized it's been in quite a while. So I'm kind of excited by that. Definitely, definitely still more to be done. Um, I think I'm almost around at the point where I can start doing like some, some sorting streams and stuff that we've talked about in the past. That, like I'll actually be in a situation where like if I do a sorting stream, I'll actually have things, like I'll be able to put the things I sort away. Um, you guys saw, might have seen on uh, social media after we did our blockade runner stream last weekend, I went and built a base or a stand for the blockade runner. Uh, that was only possible because I had started organizing things so I was able to find all the pieces I was going to need fairly easily so that was pretty awesome. Other things go, let's see what else. So if you entered the giveaway already, or when you go and enter the giveaway, you'll see a bunch of sets on the form for what we should build next that were not on there previously. So uh, we're still waiting for confirmation from the last request we put in for LEGO for some newer sets. Um, so it's looking like after the boost droid set may maybe dig it into my personal collection as far as what to build next um, but if we do get anything from lego that those are going to take uh, priority i guess so we'll switch back over to those but until such time we'll be digging into black sixes personal set vault so interested to see what older sets i've got lying around that you guys want to see us build Looks like what we're doing here is going to turn out to be some of the uh, suspension, or maybe the steering mechanism, maybe a little bit of both for our off-roader. I guess was the last Technic set we built. Definitely seeing some similarities there.
Man, I don't really even have much to talk about as far as like things that I've been watching because there hasn't been much. I've been watching some older stuff. All right, how's this whole contraption going? Flips over like that. Oh no, this whole thing flips upside down. That's the trick. See, got you know, still got our drive axle here, and now we've got the start of our suspension. Back over. Okay, now we're doing the other side. So yeah, if you've got any uh, recommendations for shows to watch, I'm all ears. I do still have a little bit of a personal backlog of things, but what have you been watching during quarantine that you've been enjoying? I did uh, start continuing my Batman movie rewatch last night. Watch Batman Returns. So yeah, that was a that was a thing. I feel like I enjoyed it better than the 1989 Batman. I mean, Jack Nicholson's pretty amazing, but Danny DeVito and Christopher Walken, I thought, did a, a pretty fantastic job. And it was kind of like, I don't know, a little bit more of like a human story element to it, as far as like the motivations and stuff. So I think I kind of like that a little more. So this is interesting. These pieces have come pre-assembled, uh, whereas in past builds, I don't know if it was the exact same piece, because I don't remember the ball joints being integrated, but I feel like they were separate and you would put the hub into this piece. Curious as to why that is that way now. Like what what changed that made them have to do that? That's like a manufacturing thing or what? I'm definitely pretty sure that this hub piece is new because I don't believe the last one the last one had its own connection thing on here and this one uses the same piece that we were showing off before that goes into here as well so it can turn
And yeah, so then the uh, little ball joints here lock into there, lock into there. And so now you can see that the suspension can go up and down and the wheels can, can turn, maybe. Oh, except I think I put this in backwards. I keep turning around this gearbox thing on me. One step is facing one way, one step another. Make up your minds, guys. And yeah, and then not both will also be able to turn. We've got one of the new uh, biscuit pieces. Although well, it looks like all we're really using is to cover up these axles, which I feel like could have just been accomplished by using shorter axles, although I guess it does provide some support for them on the other side so it doesn't uh, get torqued too much. All right, now let's go on to the steering mechanism. Oh, that stream quality looks horrible. I'm sorry, guys. All right, I think after we finish this bag, we're gonna try to restart the stream again and see if that improves things. So there's the start of our steering mechanism. Can put a gear up here, and as that goes side to side, you can see that it's going to turn our wheels from side to side. in two weeks and build this out missing parts.
All right, it's time for motors. Trying to figure out which one it is that we need. Let's see, we have a couple different sizes here. I think it's a bigger XL motor. Apparently, we're supposed to put a sticker on it. So we know what it does. It's interesting. I don't think I've ever had to put a sticker on a Lego motor before. So yeah, here is our uh, powered up motor. I believe this is the XL motor. Put a little sticker on here with this white guy on it. There's the new connector that they introduced with Powered Up. Alright, we're building onto that a little bit. We're just building around the motor using all these Technic pinholes until eventually we can attach it to that. I definitely feel like they have increased the number of pin connection points on here. Well, I wish there were some on the top and bottom as well, they're all like laterally for some reason. Seems like very two dimensional thinking, as a certain Vulcan might say. So this looks kind of interesting. I guess rather than have the motor directly drive an axle, we're designing it so that we're going to put a gear in there and it's going to immediately go to another gear and drive the axle there. I don't know if that's for a gearing ratio thing or a kind of stability concern or what. Can drive it. I think lots of support on here. I assume it's because you know, this is an XL motor and it means it's got like a lot of torque on it. So we want to make sure that that mechanism is reinforced. Here is a new piece to me. I think this was first introduced in Spike Prime. It is a wire clip, so it's got a Technic 
axle hole in there. And it's got this like kind of slot in here that uh, allows it to attach onto the wire of our powered up motor so we can hold it into place somewhere. Now, get to connect this. Let's make sure we're doing it right. All right. So our axle goes, nope, the axle goes in here, connect that in. So now this gear goes down to here to this tan gear and you can see how that is driving our wheels there. Now we get to do some shock absorbers. All right, looks like there's just uh, one more assembly to do in bag one that we need our large motor for. Also, it's going to have a sticker on it. Hey there, Box Commander, welcome. All right, so here is our large motor. Again, lots of pin connections on the sides, but not so much top and bottom. And a few on the front as well. So I'm guessing this large motor is going to be for the steering mechanism. So I guess there's gonna be one XL motor for the front wheels, one XL for the back, and then the large motor for the steering. It's kind of interesting, I guess because of uh, all the smarts in the hub, um, the powered up control plus hub that will allow the front and rear motors to stay in sync. Otherwise, I feel like that would be a kind of tricky thing to have to worry about. Yeah, we're probably going to restart the stream after we finish this bag, Box Commander, to figure out if we can get that buffering to go away. It's uh, not good. The lesson of the day is do not upgrade your computer operating system ever. <laughs>
Got ourselves a big Technic turntable. Oops, there we go. Now seat it all the way. That's probably why we need a motor for the front and back because the two axles are going to have a kind of independent suspension from each other. I guess it could probably be done without that, but it would be a lot trickier too. This time in blue, which I guess matches the, uh, the motor there. And now this whole assembly is going to attach on here and it actually connects to our first XL motor there. Looks like the motors are an integral part of our build here. Locking a whole bunch of stuff together with some Technic beams here. So now it's going to be all one very solid assembly. In theory, eventually, with some uh, suspension going on. Oh, there we go. So you can see now we've got uh, working suspension. So in theory, our wheels turn. And the whole thing is on this turntable, which I realize is not in the proper position because it should have been locked in by this Technic beam.
Time for another sticker. There are a lot of stickers on this sheet. It does not make it easy to find the one you need. No step. What is this, like a jet fighter or something? All right, so we finished all of the support bracing on this side. And now I'm going to do the other side. So since this seems like we're just about done with this bag, I'm going to put up the giveaway link. Uh, I don't think the... Okay, maybe the stream delay has... Calm down, because that did seem like it popped up pretty quick. Somehow it caught up. See, it's really slow on my laptop. Okay, so I guess some, some things are going quick. Like when I change the overlay, that seems to go really quick, but the overlay is on top of really old video. <laughs> Interesting with the overlay changed quick, even though the video is behind. Which probably makes it seem like it's on my end. And again, don't upgrade your computer operating system.
works that we get to work. On screen check, it's cleared when I change the overlay, so that is kind of a known thing. So, we're working on, I guess, this looks like it's going to be maybe part of like the front bumper or something, because it's going in this turntable here. It does seem kind of aesthetic in its purpose. And now I get to do that on the other side, and that's going to wrap it up for our first bag. Once we're done with our first bag here, I'm going to take a little break. Make sure everything is caught up on stream with what I've built. And then we'll do our first giveaway. Alright, so I'm going to go on mute for a couple minutes and when I come back, Hopefully things will be caught up and we'll restart the stream, see if we can fix some